This is Jason Miller, CFII instructor for the AOPA Air Safety Institute and creator of the Learn the Finer Points channel. And this is me, private pilot with an instrument rating and zero experience in flying around mountains and in high density altitude. Now, we're sharing the same cockpit for some real mountain flying training in the high Sierras, one of the most beautiful and challenging places I've ever flown. Alpine County, Grumman 716 Echo Romeo, final runway 35, Alpine County. Don't get slow, power, 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 power. power. This is my very first time at 10,000 feet. Oh, really? In a GA aircraft, yeah. Wow, man. <laughs> We're going to hit 12.5 today. Nice. Yeah. This is easily the most beautiful flying I've ever done. Yeah, life. man. Just like surfing. Yeah. You just don't <laughs> see the waves. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> this year, I joined Jason in his mountain flying airplane camp, a four day intensive program on mountain flying and survival training, while camping with some of the finest pilots and flying instructors you can find. After hopping on a flight to Sacramento and meeting up with Jason, we drove to Salt Lake Tahoe in his 1992 RV nicknamed Gloria. After two hours snaking through the roads around Lake Tahoe and Desolation Wilderness National Park, we arrived at our camping site, just one mile from Salt Lake Tahoe Airport, our base for the course. We met up with the other pilots, set up our tents, and got ready to kick off the program, which included daily seminars, lessons on survival equipment and techniques, and of course, flying. And for that, Jason had prepared a nice surprise for me. I'll be flying a Grumman, but just not any Grumman. The 2022 AOPA Sweepstakes Grumman Tiger, which went through a complete overhaul and modernization before being awarded to one lucky winner. The winner happened to be participating in this mountain flying course with his other plane, and was kind enough to let me borrow his new Tiger for the training. So even if I was 2500 miles from my own Grumman, I'd still feel at home. A huge thanks to Alex and Jason for making this happen. Now, onto the fly. Wait for it, yeah, nice. Beautiful. All right, we use just less than 2,000 feet of runway. Awesome. At an 8,000 foot density altitude just for our data. All right. Salt Lake Tahoe traffic, uh, Tiger 716 Echo Romeo is on the departure leg, runway 36, Salt Lake Tahoe. And we have just a little bit for the noise of aim. Remember, 10 degrees left. Left? Yeah, just follow, like, see that little cutout in the trees? That's yeah. basically you want to go that way. Okay. There's our campground. Yeah, perfect. That's oh. nice to have that meadow, too, for, like, any engine issues. Oh, yeah. Traffic helicopter 2, Juliet. Juliet is... Do you get any climb at all at 100, or is it just... Um, let's see. Let's see how many that is. It's 2, okay. Uh, not really. Alright. Climbing at a higher airspeed would help keep the cylinders cooler, but anything above 90 knots wouldn't allow us to climb. This was my first time flying in such a high density altitude and experienced how much it affects performance. At full power, the engine can perform down to 40% less than at sea level, such as New York, where I'm used to flying. 500 feet a minute at a density altitude of 8,000 feet with three people on board plus few at tabs was the best we could get out of the Tiger. Like just kind of head that way along the shoreline. On this first flight, we did a loop around Lake Tahoe while reviewing the basics of mountain waves and how important it is to interpret the winds when flying this kind of terrain. Winds flow through mountains like water flows through rocks. The topography dictates its course. It will go up the mountains on one side and down on the other side. You always want to be on the upwind side, so you leverage the updrafts to gain lift. On the downwind side, downdrafts can be dangerous, and climbing at full power sometimes isn't enough to counteract it. So, based on what we're seeing on your wind indicator, you'd want to get as close to that peak as you feel comfortable? Okay. This side here or that side? Well, I would get over to the, yeah, away from the downdraft side like that. Oh, okay. Get right up against that train, and then at the last minute, so here's your 45 in the last minute, just sort of zigzag back. Got it. And then we'll just try to note what we feel. 12 knots is not a huge amount of wind, but we should feel some downdrafts and some ripples off those mountains right over there. Yeah. Like right there, that's right it. There. You're in the washing machine. Yeah. Mountain flying is all about reading the winds and constantly readjusting your course so they work to your advantage. At altitudes in which your engine may not give you the best climb performance, the updrafts can really make a difference. It's just a matter of knowing where they are. And I, I would think that if you hook the right side of this hill, you should be able to stay in that updraft, right? Yeah, you would. That's right. Here? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're past it now, but yeah. 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 We'll see more of that. Like, after we go to Alpine County, we'll go through Luther Pass and experiment with some of that on our way back to South Lake. Cool. 
After circling Lake Tahoe and crossing the Nevada state line just south of Carson City, we continue to track south towards Alpine County, a tiny little airport located in a remote area southeast of Alpine Village. The idea was to experience the effects of density altitude on a narrow and shorter runway, along with terrain on both sides. Try to just focus on the runway, don't worry too much about the terrain, you know, okay. the terrain will be disorienting. Because of its original design, Grumman's don't slow down easily, so I'm used to increasing my pitch just a bit on final to create more drag and reduce speed. It works great at sea level, where the denser air cushions the plane down to the runway, but as I was about to find out, in thinner air such as here, that strategy doesn't work too well. Alpine County, Grumman 716 Echo Romeo's final runway 35 Alpine County. Alpine County, Tim Comanche, 3 Delta Charlie. Don't get slow, power, 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 power. So there you go. Yep. Watch the land. There you go. Let it get a little lower before you round out like that. And we're showing, saying hi, we're not landing from this one. Beautiful. Your touchdowns are awesome, nice, dude. dude. Yeah, man, they're like right down the runway. You have a good sense of where the wheels are in this plane. Yeah. I love your landings. Uh, thank you. I'm short final there. You got a little slow because we started to kind of round out a little yeah. high. Yeah. And so just wait till you're in ground effect. You got these awesome wings. Get them a little lower to the ground and then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the minute I, I heard the, the, the stall horn, I'm like. Yeah, yeah. But I shouldn't be hearing that. It's all right. It's yeah. just, you know, it's all, it's all, everything's different, including yeah. the plane. <laughs> right. <laughs> True. Uh, let's just, whenever you're ready, we'll spin around and yeah, let's get out of here. here. That was a learning experience, and Jason and I thoroughly debriefed after we got back. My landings after the fact actually got much better, which proves that in aviation, we never stop learning. We took off and proceeded back to Salt Lake Tahoe through Luther Pass. In this narrow valley, the wind flow becomes very evident, and it's very easy to feel the updrafts if you're hugging the right side of the hills. Now you're going up. Oh, there you're going we go. up. Yeah, it's like an elevator. Wow. There you go. <laughs> so apparent. Yep. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> One of the coolest things about flying around these mountains is that you can be at 8 or 9,000 feet MSL and yet at just 500 feet above ground. Definitely not something I get to experience out east. Luther Pass leads to a much larger valley where South Lake Tahoe is, and soon we were back on the ground at our camping site. Every day after our flying activities, we would come back to cold drinks and freshly prepared meals and spend the rest of the evening relaxing and talking aviation. The CFIs that come to airplane camp are retired Air Force pilots and airline captains, and listening to their incredible stories around the bonfires felt nothing but surreal. All of this, combined with the breathtaking scenery surrounding us, makes this trip a truly one-of-a-kind experience. Morning, Saturday, we're about to get breakfast here and get this day started. Today is all about flying. It's pretty much the whole day. We're gonna fly all the mountain passes today down to Mammoth, me and Jason in the plane. We have a really cool uh, flight plan on, on, on my fourth flight. Let's get this thing started. One of the lessons I've learned about flying the mountains or remote areas is the importance of having a VFR flight plan on file so someone knows where you're going and your intended route to your destination. You will significantly increase the odds of being found by search and rescue quicker if you have an emergency. Has it been a while since you've contacted flight service? Yeah. Some of those basic skills come in super handy, especially when you're flying remote, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's Reno Radio. Roman 716 Echo Romeo, however miles southeast, and then say Squaw Valley so they know what, yeah, all right. Reno Radio, good morning, Roman 716 Echo Romeo, 30 miles southeast of Squaw Valley. Grumman 716 Echo Romeo, Reno Radio. Good morning, Reno Radio, uh, 716 Echo Romeo, we'd like to file a VFR flight plan from Tango Victor Lima to Mike Mike Hotel. 
Rocky, the member 6 at Karoma, VFRI, Foreign Safe Type Aircraft. Karoma Tiger, Alpha, Alpha 5. A6 at Karomi, say your altitude for the cruise. Uh, we'll be at 10,500, 6 at Karomi. And 6 at Karomi, verify route of flight direct and say time and route. You won't be a direct. I have a few waypoints to give you and two hours, flight route. Hey, Brian. 6 at Karomi, go ahead with the route. All right, so we're starting at Tango Victor Lima. Uh, next waypoint is Kilo, Romeo Kilo, Whiskey Delta. Then November Echo Uniform. After successfully filing our flight plan through flight service, we proceeded south towards the rising and imposing terrain of the high Sierras. And as we climbed alongside the peaks, it became evident how important it is to have your location be known at all times. See all these little meadows? Yeah. So that's what I was saying when you fly through this mountain range in particular. There's a lot of places for you and I to land safely, but we're probably going to be out there till tomorrow, tomorrow night, True. Before, before someone gets there, you know? True. FYI, this is my very first time at 10,000 feet. Oh, really? In a GA aircraft, yes. Wow, man. <laughs> We're going to hit 12.5 today. Nice. Yeah. With the winds predominantly coming from our left, we kept reading the terrain to stay at the upwind side at every turn. And while navigating this challenging and new-to-me environment kept me really busy, it didn't stop me from taking in the absolute beauty of nature laid out in front of my eyes. This is easily the most beautiful flying I've ever done. Yeah, life. man, I know. Mine too, to be honest. It's kind of, um, the snow is beautiful and all too, but like when it's melted a little more so you get a little green, is quite nice also. So you'll have to come back in another year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going to kind of fly out of the range a little bit, so just keep going straight ahead. Okay. So that we can turn around and come back in through Buckeye Pass. It's pretty dramatic. Caution, terrain. Caution, terrain. After a two-hour flight squeezing the Grumman through the spectacular valleys and passes of the High Sierras, we headed to Mammoth Lakes Airport, the gateway to Yosemite National Park. The plan was to grab lunch with the rest of the group and then take off again for more mountain flying on our way back to South Lake Tahoe. Right, so we just landed here at Mammoth um, Airport, and I gotta say, this was this was easily the most beautiful flight I've ever ever done. The combination of finally starting to get what mountain flying is, and starting to read the terrain, read what the wind is doing around the mountains and around the passes and everything, gives me a whole new insight into you know flying in the mountains. Not something that I can really experience you know, back in New Jersey. We stopped here to grab lunch. Actually, we brought lunch with us. We we're gonna, you know, have our snack there and then head back through the same passes, seeing the, the, those views one more time. Such an amazing trip so far. Such an amazing flight today. I'm just mind blown, mind blown. While having lunch, the group decided to take a slight detour on our return flight to overflight Bodie, a ghost town from the 1880s, just north of Mono Lake. Bodie has been uninhabited for almost a century. The piece of history frozen in time. Mammoth traffic, Roman Tiger 716 Echo Romeo is taking runway 9 for a left downward departure to the west. Mammoth. We proceeded north towards Mono Lake and planned for a low pass over Bodie. I think that's the town, right? gotta be we're just here we should get down low enough to see the ghost town huh? <laughs> we dropped down to 500 feet AGL to get a good view and wow there is nothing there wow so freaky. I bet that town has cheap real estate <laughs> Justin if you're looking for a good deal you could probably get a condo here yeah I heard the commute's a little rough but uh, <laughs> the neighbors are all dead silent <laughs> Our route back to Lake Tahoe took us through the same gorgeous valleys and passes. Alex and his CFI Justin, flying the 185 Skywagon, caught us and kept us company for some of the flight. Jason and I were having a blast, relaxing and enjoying the views all the way home.
Sunday was the fourth and last day of this trip. And while taking down my tent and packing up, I couldn't stop thinking about how much aviation changed my life. It allowed me to create a story that ultimately brought me to this weekend with memories that I'll cherish forever. From sharing the cockpit with and learning from Jason Miller, whom I look up to since my student pilot days, to witnessing the incredible beauty of nature and learning to respect it even more, to spending time with amazing fellow aviators around the fire, this trip was one of the most special I've ever done. The Mountain Flying Airplane Camp is just one of the several flying trips the Finer Points organizes every year, and their website details how you can join the next ones. The link is down in the description. I'll most definitely attend another. Before leaving our camping ground for the last time, we got an exclusive to Finer Points survival kit and learned how to use the tools to start a fire, use mirror signals, and other effective tactics on how to safely spend the unexpected night out. This mountain flying training also counts as a flight review, and all participant pilots got a sign off for another 24 calendar months. And while the training was over, I wasn't done flying. The Grumman Tiger had to be ferried back to an airport where Alex, the owner, would pick it up, and I volunteered to bring it there. Philip, one of the attendees, hitched a ride with me. Getting to fly this plane throughout the weekend was really special too. Not only it's a Grumman, but one, the entire aviation community watched transform and be modernized through AOPA for over a year, including myself. Maybe next year I'll be back here in South Lake Tahoe with my own Grumman to join this adventure again. It's definitely worth the cross country trip. Until then, I have lots of more flying adventures to share with you, so make sure to subscribe and keep an eye on this channel along with my Instagram page. I'll see you again in the next video. Until then, fly safe, blue skies, and tailwinds.